I think we have all our attendees and I think let's start uh, with the first session of a bootcamp and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so this is the first session of the bootcamp and we have all our startups with us. So I think how we'll proceed is uh, like UNF giving their introduction. So I'll hand over to Mustaq. Okay, let me just say hello from my side. So I'm Janet um, and I'm running the Asia Pacific Low Carbon Lifestyles Challenge. I'm with the UN Environment Program. Um, so I'm very happy to see everyone. You'll see more of me later, but let me now hand over to Mushtaq Memon. Hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon. And so uh, colleagues and partners and also the participants of the bootcamp for this uh, Asia Pacific Low Carbon Lifestyle Challenge. And so taking the uh, first opportunity, I would like to uh, welcome you to this United Nations Environment Programs uh, project where we are trying to bring the, or boost up the businesses or the startups supporting the sustainable lifestyles. As now we need more brighter and innovative ideas and especially after like uh, coming to the recent pandemic uh, covid we rather need uh, at the quicker uh, pace and so at unep though we have been working all the years with the brilliant ideas and so on working with the policymakers, working with the major businesses working with the ngos think tanks and so on but this aspect is comparatively newer, like uh, since last two years. And so we are trying to now groom or help the startups so they can take advantage of UNEP's convening power with the, all the stakeholders to see how we can help the environmental businesses to grow. And especially as we see most of the businesses leaving a few like gambling apart, most of the businesses they create a value added to our lives, to customers' lives, to the community, to new jobs, and so on. And if you read through those value added stories, that is quite amazing that how this value added becomes a mission. And it's a business, it's not a charity, it's a business, but they do the value added. I mean, they, every business is doing the value added, but how they do the value added as their marketing mission or brand mission through behavioral changes, internal support, through measurement, partnerships, and systematic change. And if you haven't read through, for example, the story of LifeBoy, so I think everyone knows about LifeBoy, that how LifeBoy or Unilever helped to increase the hand washing, even before pandemic, I'm talking about the last 10 years, and help the public health like diarrhea and other things. And on, on the same pace, they earn a lot from the sales, increasing sale of the life boy as well. So you can see that everything is, uh, every business is creating a value added. So I would like you to think whether you are uh, selling a solar light panels or solar energy, how you are creating a value added. So you are not going to kill the other solar panels, rather you are increasing the market for the solar panels where your share will automatically increase. So looking back, at the situation before the COVID and sort of uh, estimating or pro uh, projecting the situation after COVID, how these scenarios are changing. And I think for you as a youngster can take advantage of that and especially how to utilize the digital technologies as this is the first time we are having a bootcamp through online using the digital technologies, but digital technologies are helping a lot of businesses to cut the cost, to cut the waste, even the agriculture sector, industrial sector, and so on, uh, retailing sector, and so forth. So I would like to really uh, looking forward that uh, after like uh, six months or so on, your stories are published in Harvard Business Review or on the CNN and so on. So let's see who makes it there, but I hope all of uh, nine can make it there. But nevertheless, I would like to really uh, take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, all everyone, especially Ministry of Environment Japan for their support, uh, the Mitsui Corporation, DCL, Massive uh, Foundation, 
and our like colleagues in One Planet Network, and also our great friends from the Asia Pacific Roundtable on SCP, and so on. And nevertheless, Janet is with you, and she'll be leading and guiding you, to hopefully, till you appear on CNN or Harvard Business Review. All the best. Enjoy the boot camp. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mushtaq, from UNEP's Asia and the Pacific office. Uh, next, uh, we have a short welcome from Ken Megita from Mitsui Chemicals Group, who is our corporate partner helping us understand the plastic waste prevention, um, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Please, Megita san. Uh, thank you, Janet san. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Ken Megita. Uh, I'm senior director and general manager in charge of the corporate sustainability division at Mitsui Chemicals, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to express gratitude to UNAP, Jensen, Melosan, and uh, every other staff for working on this great program and uh, inviting uh, Mitsui Chemicals as its partner. Uh, on, behalf, on behalf of Mitsui Chemicals, uh, I would like to congratulate all of the young entrepreneurs selected for this program from all over the Asia. Uh, we are now truly honored to be involved with this program and they support your startup businesses and activities uh, which will be contributing to low carbon lifestyle in Asia. And the uh, Chemicals is one of the largest petrochemical companies in Japan. Uh, plastics such as polyolefin and PET uh, are major products. Uh, we have dedicated more than 100 years to make people's life easier and better through our knowledge and uh, technology. However, today uh, we are facing critical issues, of course, uh, climate change and plastic waste problem. Uh, we believe that uh, climate change and the plastic waste issues are inseparable uh, from each other. Uh, both issues are extremely complicated and require enormous resources and long, long time to be resolved. No, no one person, no one company, no one country can solve them. We must cooperate together. Uh, we are very excited to get this opportunity to support all of you who have unique disruptive ideas to tackle those issues. Uh, I believe uh, this program is a great initial step for us to expand our effort for the sustainable society. Uh, I believe uh, your ideas have great potential to change the world. Uh, we are willing to help your business business models blast up uh, through this bootcamp. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, progress of, the, of de developing your business model. Uh, Mitsui Chemicals, we are always open to assist you. I hope your businesses uh, would bring new values to the sustainability of the world in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Migita-san from Mitsui Chemicals Group. Okay, next I would like to ask Anthony Chu from the Asia Pacific Roundtable on Sustainable Consumption and Production to say a few words of welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to congratulate all of you who made it to this uh, important network. Uh, the Asia Pacific Roundtable for SCP uh, is uh, very uh, happy to join force with the uh, UNEP Grow Up and also other uh, partners in this uh, uh, sustainable lifestyle uh, project. As you know, uh, in the early days, we only promoted production side before year 2000. But after year 2000, we integrated both consumption and production towards a SDG, which was now part of the 12th uh, the 12th SDG of the UN uh, goals. Therefore, I ver I'm very sure that these um, innovative ideas that the young generation is uh, contributing, uh, especially many out of the box innovative thinking are very important to make the future uh, more sustainable, especially under the new normal lifestyle that we are going to confront with. Congratulations again. Thank you very much, Anthony. Um, now I'm going to move to our energy partner, which is GCL uh, Group. 
Uh, so I'd like to invite Dong Le to unmute himself and say a few words of welcome. Uh, hi, my name is Dong Lei. Um, I represent a China-based renewable energy uh, company called GCL Group. Uh, we are uh, one of the largest uh, solar energy focused companies uh, in the world. And um, I think we all agree that when we, uh, when uh, UNEP started this project, uh, the world was uh, different, very different. And, and now uh, I think everybody would agree that the work, the project you have been carrying out has never been more important than today. Uh, and at this uh, junction, I think uh, the, the form of the public-private partnership, uh, which is uh, undertaken by this uh, project, uh, has never been more important than before too. Uh, which also means that you will face more competitions from other young and brilliant um, colleagues. The competition for ideas, the competition for talent, the competition for market. And this brings the importance of working with great partners uh, to a, a, a high level. And the people you work with and the partner you work, work with will support you through um, the, uh, the tough journey toward a successful um, venture um, um, experience. So uh, I hope you can truly enjoy this um, um, bootcamp and also connect to each other, connect to your partner, connect to your corporate partners and to find the right partner uh, for your uh, future success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tong Lei. Okay, so um, before I hand over to the Massive Earth Foundation, I just want to introduce the competition, uh, which is the Asia Pacific Low Carbon Lifestyles Challenge. So we believe that everyone in Asia and the Pacific should have the opportunity to live a sustainable low carbon lifestyle, but that's just not possible unless there are products and services available on the market. So our competition is there to, to look for these solutions amongst um, startups in the region and to provide some support to them. And the boot camp is one of the elements of support that we're giving. Now, due to the COVID-19 um, travel restrictions, we moved from an in-person format to an online format and thought, instead of making it less than it was, let's make it bigger, we're making it longer, and we're making it available to all of you so that you can also join the boot camp, join the nine winners, um, so that we can also get to know your solutions and help you to build your businesses so that they can be investment ready. One of the problems we're seeing with uh, green startups is they focus so much on the green and the environmental side, but they still need to be a viable, attractive business so that they can attract finance and scale. That's what this boot camp is all about. So to give an introduction to the boot camp, I'd like to ask Sumit from Massive Earth Foundation to give a quick intro. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to United Nations Environment Program's first of its kind online bootcamp for startups in Low Carbon Challenge. We at Massive Earth Foundation are privileged to host the bootcamp on behalf of UNEP. It is an honor to work to help startups navigate the world of fundraising, design, team building. Massive Earth Foundation is backed by leading, venture, uh, leading entrepreneurs and venture capitalists. We work on actionable policies for pollution reduction and climate change. We initiate pilot programs, engage in research to support policymakers and investors in arriving at the correct path to be taken. We attempt to re basically remove the noise from the data and come up with actionable insights to act upon. We are supported by uh, Go Massive Earth Network, which is an incubator. We have backed three ventures to date, primarily in electric mobility and waste. We work with startups to achieve scale, growth, and most importantly, generate venture returns for our investors. In the next 12 weeks, we will host for you some exciting sessions led by people who are either investors or raised capital for companies, or in fact have done both. There are basically a lot of theories that go around fundraising, team building, design, uh, but the idea of this bootcamp is not to give you the perfect theory, but to help you arrive at the perfect solution for yourself. So please make sure that you ask as many questions as possible. They, uh, there will be a lot of support that will be offered that to basically arrive at the path that works best for you. I welcome you all once again. 
thank Mushtaq, Janet, and the team at UNEP for choosing us as the host and knowledge partners for this bootcamp. Thanks so much, Sumi. So the first thing that we're going to do in this uh, for the next 40 minutes or so um, is you're going to hear the three minute pitches from the startups as they are before the bootcamp. Now, during the bootcamp, we're going to work on what is a perfect pitch um, and what, it, how to, what investors are actually interested to see in your pitch. But as an introduction, we want uh, to see yours. So Abhinav, if you can go back one slide. So what we, what we suggest to all attendees for your ventures and your startups is that you think about one sentence that sums up your business. Um, so you should be able to come up with this kind of slide in your pitch deck. Um, now this is a Mad Lib, which is like a, a sentence that you can fill with your information. My company, company name, is developing a defined offering to help a defined target audience. Don't forget your target audience and your user. To solve this problem, what's the issue? With the secret sauce. So what is it that you're, you're able to give? Um, and this is thanks to our friends at the Sassin uh, Sustainability and Entrepreneurship Centre in Thailand. Okay, so we're now going to go through each of the pitches. Um, starting with Sissy, she was one, uh, one of the three winners in the plastic waste prevention category. So her Mad Lib is my company, Remake Hub, is developing fashion products to help our blue ocean, so how her client is the ocean, reduce the ghost fishing net waste via innovative recycling technology and sustainable design thinking. So Sissy, over to you, please share your screen and your time starts as soon as you get started. Okay. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Sissy Chow, uh, the founder of Remake Hub. So today I'm going to share the story about the magic of remaking ocean waste. So we are a young startup uh, established in 2018, and we are mission-driven based. Uh, main purpose is to clean up the ocean waste. As we all know, uh, there are estimated 640,000 tons of fishing net are thrown in the ocean every year and it kills almost uh, 100,000 marine lives every year. Ultimately, it will contaminate our food supply chain and then it will cause around five to 19 billion US dollars of economic loss. So how can we solve this issue? Our idea is to create the pollution and turn the pollution into solution. So we will turn the fishing net into renewable nylon as a new material. So how we do, um, we work with the NGOs and fishing companies from the Asia Pacific, and then we uh, transform, uh, we transfer those fishing nets into our factory, then eventually we turn them into different kind of products. So right now we have successfully made a, a a joint uh, project with WWF Australia. We turn fishing net into a sunglasses. Uh, we also use the blockchain to trace the entire journey uh, on an app once you receive these uh, sunglasses and you can see more information based on the landing page. What's more, we also did uh, um, fashion industry um, applications. There are buttons, velcroed and zipper as well as in the chair industry, the furniture. Uh, recently, we are also developing into uh, the toy industry and the fashion yarn industry. So the main purpose we wanted to combat is um, the climate change, the ocean plastic pollution and biodiversity loss because we, it's really, really sad to see all those corals turn from uh, the color for you know, the, the, the lifestyle that they had into the dead white color. Uh, our Remake Hub is uh, uh, committed to eight, um, eight SDG goals, mainly to number 14, uh, life below water. So in 2020, we are aiming to um, prevent 10,000 tons of fishing net. We wanted to recycle them and uh, apply those uh, new material into different industry, as well as to share the story with uh, many stakeholders. We want to influence around 100 million ocean lovers around the world to help us and support this initiative. So in the end, we wanted to see a better world. That's why we are here. 
Thank you. Okay, I think uh, she finished in time. So let's move on to the next startup. Okay, the next one is Lin Le with a cup club. So again, a plastic waste uh, winner in our competition. Her company, Aya Cup, there we go, is developing a cup share system to help bubble tea drinkers to conveniently reduce plastic waste with our cup share app and re compostable reusable cups. Okay, Lynn, if you can share your screen uh, and start your pitch. Okay, yep. hi, great. Hi, my name is Lynn. I'm the founder of Aya Cup and we offer people the ability to use and return reusable cups to eliminate disposable plastic in checkout and home delivery. Uh, we provide eco reusable cups at a wide network of coffee shop and restaurants for user, instead of asking you to bring your own tumbler to wash and then carry around, uh, you can borrow Aya Cup for your takeaways and put a deposit in on top. After usage, you can return at any location and get 100% uh, refund for without um, washing required. By this way, we are able to bring the reusable packaging at scale and cut off uh, millions of tons of low value plastic waste from our convenient lifestyle. Uh, currently, our reusable cups are locally sourced from a plant based material, uh, actually made from cassava starch and polyethylene, which can be biodegradable within two years in the normal landfill um, conditions. The takeout and food delivery in Vietnam is increased about 15% annually and leaving behind 29 million pieces of plastic and styrofoam every day. Um, on the other side, we have a food and beverage provider who are very slowly to switch to biodegradable packaging materials uh, as they are three to 10 times more expensive than plastic. And as a uh, young generation of consumer, we all understand uh, very well the pain of trying to go green where there's no system to support our healthy habits. And uh, we got inspired by the circular economy and we want to disrupt these low single use value plastic uh, industry that could that worth uh, $1.6 billion. We launched in uh, August 2019 and having dozens of um, beverage provider in Vietnam and eliminate over 30,000 single use plastic cups. So uh, Vietnam economy has increased about 7% uh, year over year, and we are the fastest growth uh, rate in the region. However, we are still the top five country polluting the ocean the most. And with Ayakap, we aim to make the revolution in takeaway and become an innovative country, not only in solving our problem, but also a leading example in the region. And so come join us today at ayakap.com, and we uh, let's put the end to the single use plastic. Thank you. I should stop. All right, fantastic. Just on time. So that's perfect. Um, so next we have Rikesh. Um, if I can get his sentence up from Abhinav first. Just so Rikesh is, um, with, is our winner from Bhutan. He's also in the plastic waste category. He is upcycling plastic into eco roads in Bhutan. Let's see if we can get his special sentence. Here we go. My company Green Road is using plastic waste in the black topping of roads to help communities reduce plastic waste and my country to reduce import and use of fossil fuels through his special source, a circular economy approach to plastic waste collection and road construction. Okay, so over to you, Rikesh. We're looking forward to your pitch. Uh, so good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rikesh Karu. I'm the founder and uh, managing director of the company called The Green Road. Uh, the Green Road is the first uh, recycling company in the country uh, that uses uh, waste plastic in uh, building eco-friendly and durable roads. So some 17 years ago, I when I was pursuing my uh, bachelor's degree in India, the south of India, I, I happened to come across this technology. And straight away, I fell in love with this technology and I, I decided that I would do the same technology in my country. But uh, after I returned back in 2010, uh, it was very difficult. Uh, people were very skeptical about this project. People uh, really didn't know that plastic could be used in uh, building uh, roads. 
So it took me almost four years to convince the government. And then uh, I uh, built the first plastic road uh, in 2015, in October 5th. And so far, uh, the company has built around 69 kilometers of road and reused uh, 420 tons of waste plastic. So uh, the solid waste management, you know, uh, durable roads was always a problem for our country. And then the import of a huge quantity of bitumen was creating this huge trade deficit. Uh, of course, we sell uh, some 10 billion worth of electricity to, the, to India, but at the same time, was importing about uh, more than 15 billion of worth of fossil fuels. So that's how I came in now. So what I have been doing is I have been uh, you know, signing MOU with uh, municipals in the country. And so far I've signed uh, four MOUs with different municipals. So what I do is I take over the landfill management. I, I, I extract uh, plastics from the landfill and then I straight away I use it in road construction. So until last year, what I was doing was I was uh, just uh, collecting the plastic waste and then shredding it and then I was selling it to the government. But like uh, Janice said earlier, business had to be viable uh, for me to you know, pay, my, pay my staff and then also uh, pay back the, the, the money that I borrowed from the bank. So what I did was I have set up this whole asphalt plant now. And likewise, what I was able to, I was able to you know, maintain the quality of the roads because unlike, unlike other contractors who just give a, a liability period, a guarantee period of one year, my company gives a guarantee period of five years, the roads that I built. So not just uh, the initial cost uh, saving on building plastic roads, but at the same time, the cost and repair for the next five years is, uh, is almost nil. So this is how we have been able to support the, the, the government and then work closely with the municipal sectors. Uh, uh, with this, we have also won some entrepreneur award in the country. And then the main objective is, of course, to work with the municipal sectors and also with uh, the government uh, sector directly. So out of the 8,800 kilometers we have, uh, we still have to repair and maintain 2,000 kilometers annually. And that's how my, my plan is to get into this uh, contract and get the contracts directly from the, the government. So uh, until uh, recently, uh, the company worth, uh, did worth of almost 40 million and then uh, uh, earned a profit of almost uh, 4.5 million. So this is uh, the, the company is all about. Thank you so much, Rikesh. Okay. Thank you. Just a little bit over. So next, uh, we're now finished the plastic waste prevention categories. And now we're moving to the mobility uh, category. So we have three winners in low carbon mobility. Um, I think we'll be starting with Earth. Um, also, I'm, I'm seeing the, the comments in the chat. If the entrepreneurs, if the panelists can respond to the questions, that would also be great. Um, okay, so next one is, uh, with next slide, please. Let's see if I can remember. So now we've got electric transport. Um, so Earth comes to us from Thailand and his company, um, e-tran, <laughs> is developing electric bikes to help motor taxi drivers and e-commerce delivery workers reduce transport costs and air pollution via an integrated electric two-wheeler system. Okay, Earth, now I'll hand over to you and you can share your screen and start your pitch. Okay. Hello, my name is Erk. I'm CEO from Yichuan, Thailand. Um, in Thailand, we have about 22 million of motorcycles here in Thailand, which generated about um, 18 million tons of CO2 and is equivalent to uh, 3 million trees to capture those carbon dioxide. Actually, it's very popular here in Thailand and and many countries among Asia Pacific um, of using uh, electric motorcycles. So our job is, oops, is to design a motorcycle and test the market. So starting from 2016, uh, we built the first prototype designed for public transportation. And then we starting uh, thinking about the, uh, the new way to produce, uh, to reduce the materials, not just do electric motorcycle, but how to reduce the plastics and few prototypes is coming. So in uh, 
2019, we are succeed of, uh, I cannot move to the next slide. What? Oh, it's troubleshoot here. It's a problem around. <laughs> I'm glad what? it stopped on the pink bike slide anyway. <laughs> I think it's continue now. So uh, we actually the first motorcycle um, uh, that uh, last year. Oh, this year, okay. We received a uh, Red Dot Design Award from Germany as a, this uh, innovative category winner. And uh, we're not stopping from that models. This year we will have another models which decide for uh, logistic purpose. So not just that, we are partner with uh, Bosch from Germany to start um, studying about uh, four wheelers for logistic purpose. And not just for the hardware side, we also working on the software side and uh, develop our own vehicle of things to connect to our bike, connect with the charger, connect with the maintenance or service provider. Um, it's about four and a half year that uh, Etran are uh, working in this area. And now we are the jigsaw to success to launch the uh, electric um, vehicle ecosystem here in Thailand with our partners. For example, um, uh, with Bendeler, with Robert Bosch, with Michelin, um, PhD Group, the public listed company in Thailand, leading energy company, and many um, partners are on the line. We are doing this thing to be a part of our sustainable development goals. Start from number seven, we would like to reduce the cost of uh, building electric motorcycle that everyone can own it. And number nine, we not just build the vehicle, we also building the infrastructure here partner with a PTT group. And the last one is number 11. It's about the uh, enable the uh, sustainable cities because we're not just building electric motorcycle. The plastic that we use is also from uh, natural fibers, about 52% of our bike. So our goal is to do about 200 thousand e-tran within this five year that will equivalent to one million trees and that's it thank you very much thank you very much Earth. well done let me just meet you okay on to our next low carbon mobility startup um that will be aj and let's see if we can get the slide up with his yeah. mad lib uh, earth, earth can you unshare your screen so that i can Okay. So all of our low carbon mobility winners are looking into um, electric mobility. We did get applications from other types of low carbon mobility, but the strongest ones did come from EVs. So um, let's move to AJ. So his company, Nimray Network, is developing a 100% clean energy EV charging platform to help electric rickshaw drivers to reduce costs and air emissions via solar energy over the blockchain. Okay, so now, AJ, could we go over to you and please start sharing your screen? Hi, hello everyone, my name is Ajay. I'm the founder and president of Nimre Network. Nimre is a decentralized electric vehicle charging network based on solar energy over blockchain. We are creating future of EV charging with clean energy. Electric vehicles need more energy more electric vehicle will create more need to burn more fossil fuel for energy, resulting into more air pollution. Also, long wait time reduces energy efficiency and earning drastically for EV drivers. And also, no individual trading for carbon credits is in place. Over Nimray network, every charger is powered by 100% clean energy, making it possible to have clean air and blue sky. The user gets cheap clean energy by selling carbon credit to the brand. Most of the cost for the energy gets covered. Everything happens on a blockchain-based payment system. It's simple as one, two, three. Owners charge their EV with clean energy charges. EV owners get an equal amount of carbon credits. 
brands like Puma, Decathlon, etc. buy back carbon credits from thousands of EV owners and complete their annual goal of carbon credits. Also, brands get thousands of customers from the network. We call it charging pass. Every time, for example, Suraj, an e-rickshaw driver, needs charging, he can easily find a 100% clean energy charger on our app. Clean energy is cheaper than the grid, saving him upfront money. Cost gets covered by brand by a buyback of carbon credit, increasing earning of e-rickshaw owners. Electric future looks good with 240 million EVs by 2030. All we need to make sure we do not pollute the environment. Our two-year timeline with full-scale commercial launch in September 2020. Our current partners are IBM Blockchain, Delta Chargers, and Vikram Solar with potential to add many more. We are honored to be the Global Energy Awards from France. We are proud to be selected by Jetro CATEC 2018 in Tokyo. Demonstrated our project at Paris Peace Forum, later selected as Young Leader India France by the French President Emmanuel Macron. Fully committed to build back better and greener after the COVID 19 pandemic. This is the wonderful, powerful team behind Nimre Network. We are looking forward to keeping the sky clean and our planet green. Thanks so much. Let's make our planet great again. Great. Thank you very much, AJ. So we had the uh, new types of scooters from um, Earth, and then AJ is connecting scooter or rickshaw drivers to solar energy. Um, and now we have um, Pichayanun from SciFi. Her company SciFi is developing an integrated solar power and surface shading and battery charging and EV lease and financing solution. So another jigsaw puzzle to help factories and their workers to harvest abundant and free solar energy and reduce their energy and transport costs via a guaranteed savings business model. Okay, so Banksy, um, Banksy, over to you. Um, please uh, unmute yourself and share your screen. You see? Not yet. And all attendees, you will all have a chance to vote at the end um, of the pitching round for who you would invest in um, if you were an investor. Okay, over to you, Banksy. Okay. You see it now? Skin. Now it's my turn to explain to you why I am here because I want to help Thai motorbike driver to reduce their transport cost by 30% and reduce local air pollution, climate change, and make our city more beautiful. My name is Bangsi and I start Sci-Fi. In the past, my company built shading solution for factories and markets. Our customers pay around $250 per square meter to keep the sun out. For 10 years. We thought that the sun was our enemy, too strong, too hot. I think we got that wrong. What if instead we see the sun as a source of abundant energy that shine for everyone for, for free for everyone? And what if we find a way to turn that free energy into value? But how? What if we use that sun power the motorbike we are shading? turning an enemy into a massive source of energy. So we reached out to some partner. Uh, we did some calculation and found that the value of sunshine per square meter is $2,500 when it's replaced to use of gasoline for 10 years. That is a lot. Then we look at what it would take to capture that value. We realized it's not too difficult but also not straightforward. Unfortunately, we cannot just produce, sell, or buy solar power from the grid in Thailand. This is not allowed. Also, we cannot just sell solar panel plus inverter plus battery and e-bike to a customer and hope this somehow works out. We realize that we need cooperation. 
a factory that is interested to install a big solar panel, solar companies who are willing to guarantee the performance of their installation, EV makers who are willing to guarantee that their e bikes work for a long time. All this to make sure that low-income customer will really save money. This is our magic source, trust. A customer will, uh, customers will only change their behavior and start to use e-bikes if we can guarantee that they will really save money. This is key to our business model. We only get paid when our customer saves. I hope you are interested to hear more. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well done. So you can see e-vehicles are really um, forefront in entrepreneurs' minds. Um, now that rounds out the three low carbon mobility startups. And the last three ones that we have are on low carbon energy. So we need to reduce the carbon footprint of energy use um, in multiple ways. So um, if I can get the slide up, the next one will be Kai Kai. Um, before you share your screen, I will share your Madlib. Okay, Kai Kai joining us from China. So Kai Kai's company, What Time, is developing an app to connect the energy producers and consumers to empower energy prosumers, which is a producer and consumer combined, to buy and sell excess electricity easily via a secure, traceable, and reliable app. Okay, Kai Kai, if you could share your screen and unmute yourself, you can start your pitch. Um, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, so, hi everyone. I'm uh, Kai Kai and I'm from Dipo Tech. So, we built the application. It's called What Time. So, uh, we built distributed energy resource aggregator to enable everyone to uh, benefit uh, greener and cheaper electricity. So, just have a quick background uh, check about renewables. Firstly, is definitely the world, the global world, need massive uh, renewables instead of uh, dirty electricity. And secondly, is electricity, especially for the DER, distributed energy resource like uh, smart meters, uh, energy uh, storage, and the EV and the solar panel, is very easy to get standardized products from the smart meter, some IoT devices. And third uh, character from the DR is there will be massive ownership, fragmented ownership from these behind the meter assets, which means everyone can have their solar panels and anyone, everyone, mm -hmm. they can have their energy storage and the electrical vehicle. So what we provide is like a, we built our aggregator to connect a different uh, massive uh, fragmented distri distributed energy resources from like a solar panels to generation and also the consumption flexibility. So that's our product. We built the application to end user and also energy management system to renewable generation. So uh, let's have a quick uh, study case to see how it works. Uh, for example, in a community, because a lot of people, they don't have their rooftop. So maybe their one user is called Jack. So Jack used the 1,000 kilowatt hour this month. And there is another user. Uh, he, she, has the, she owns the factory. And Rose produced 8, 800 kilowatt hour and shared with Jack. And after that, Jack's credits added like another 800 kilowatt hour from Rose. And at the end of this month, Jack will be billed for only 200 kilowatt hour instead of 1000 kilowatt hours. So we want to benefit people regardless of rooftop and the capital, they can use greener and cheaper electricity. So uh, we are implementing two projects. First, the project is uh, we cooperated with the Energy Regulation Council in, in Thailand and also MBA and EGET. And there will be another project undergoing in Philippines. We help local community to use renewables instead of getting the electricity, uh, expensive electricity from local utility. So uh, for me, I'm a jazz drummer for over 22 years, and I've been studying Bitcoin and blockchain like uh, almost like uh, nine years ago, eight or two nine years ago. And I've been a, as a clean tech entrepreneur uh, since 2016. 
So we are also looking for some clients, some partners, investment, and anyone who loves the idea and who wants to dedicate to low, car low carbon lifestyle with us. Thanks. Okay, great, Kai Kai. A little glimpse of the future there, um, making it easier for consumers to buy renewable electricity. Um, okay, the next, uh, we've got two more pictures left. Um, the next one is Osama from Pakistan. So his company, Enant, is developing a home energy efficiency device to help building and homeowners reduce their energy consumption by 25% via electricity load balancing. So we're going to learn all about that in the next three minutes. Um, so Osama, can I ask you to unmute yourself and share your screen? Yeah, sure. So Janet, I'm audible? Yes. So hello guys, this is Muhammad Osama bin Shakil from Pakistan. I am co-founder and CEO of Inint. So Inint is a clean tech electronic venture that aims to provide prospective, clean and affordable solutions uh, to the most pressing and daunting problems. So the very first of our product is Intelica, three phase load balancer. And the big idea is that we are reducing your electricity bills and power loss up to 20%. So guys, what's the pain? The pain is energy waste and the cause of it is phase unbalancing. So it, in, it increases your power loss and electricity bills. It decreases life cycle of your appliances and it instigates safety deficiencies. So as per NAPRA, NAPRA is regulatory body for all transmission and distribution companies in Pakistan. In 2018, 2019, Pakistan has suffered a total of PND loss of 45 billion PKR. And one of the major cause of that was phase unbalancing. So to cater that phase and balancing issue, we have developed a solution in Telica that aims to balance the load in real time by dynamic, dynamically switching the load uh, so that you have equal currents flowing through all the three phases. And by that, you can have up to 20% reduction in your electricity bills and power loss. So our market segment, uh, our beachhead segment includes housing societies and real estate companies and also residential compound of industries. Uh, once done with this, we will focus on individuals having three phase homes and corporates with multiple branches. Uh, so these are the smaller chunks. Uh, our bigger portion is to target generator and solar panel distribution companies and power distribution companies, because we believe that we have a very huge uh, role to play in those sector as well. So guys, uh, this is the main thrust of this technology. So for every thousand devices uh, installed, what you can get, you can have up to 18,000 tons of carbon dioxide emission reduction every year. Uh, $0.5 billion in electricity bills can be saved uh, by installation of this device in thousand homes. And the energy which you are saving is enough to power an additional 200 homes. So as I am living in Pakistan and we here have a very acute problem of load shedding, so definitely we can play our part in that as well. And this is directly in line with sustainable development goals uh, being SDG number seven, that is affordable and clean energy, and number 13, that is climate action. So briefing you about our revenue model, uh, initially we will focus on a residential compound of industries and housing societies uh, with power distribution companies as well. That's uh, fall in our B2B sector. And uh, under B2C, we will target consumers having three phase homes and offices with three phase power supply. And we will also offer subscription model to all those that can't pay initial upfront price. Currently, our sole competitor is 3DFS, and they claim that they have developed some similar technology like ours, but the price of their product is quite high with a minimum version ranges up to 1500 US dollar. Whereas in our case, our solution is quite affordable uh, with a selling price of 350 US dollar, and it has five to six months recovery period. So it's quite affordable. So guys, this is my team and our vision is to build innovative products that can add value and create impact to a life of common person. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Osama, with the um, device that you can install and cut your energy use at home. Um, okay, the next one is, uh, or last one now, um, in Tun's place um, is going to be his colleague, Lynn. Um, so we're going to have Lynn uh, talking uh, for what time? Uh, which is now 
already pivoted since winning the competition to a company called Airwatt, um, which is great. So um, the, the company Airwatt is a data company providing energy insights to help homeowners understand and reduce electricity waste via a device that records appliance energy use. Okay, so Lynn, if I can ask you to unmute yourself and share your screen. And our last question today, because the voting begins. Oh, yes. Uh, I will share my screen now. Uh, just a few minutes. Uh, okay, uh, can you see it? Yes. Go on. Okay. So I will start my uh, pitch now. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lin. Uh, we are from uh, Airwatch. Our company, Airwatch, is a data company, I've been said, in China, and it's energy inside to help uh, homeowners to understand and reduce electricity waste via a device that could record appliance energy use. Our mission is to make home intelligence, helping custom, uh, consumers saving more money, live more safely with more energy efficient household. So our main target market is a household and apartment in Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi, which is the biggest city in Vietnam. Um, the pain point we are aiming at for this market is that People currently have a really high electric bill and they cannot manage all of high up electricity usage in their home because of too many devices. And they can manage due to that, they can't manage risk in the future. The other one, uh, maybe a problem is that the other smart home device is not easy to use to, re to, uh, to record electricity usage in the home. So far, we provide a what? And what will help you to understand the power usage of each electronic device in your home by installing devices, the devices to the main breaker panel. In addition, Airwatt will help you monitor any electronic device whether it is on or off and record monthly electricity usage. So here are the two features that we provided with Airwatt to help you monitor in the house and control, help you control the electricity usage. The first one is that you want to notify whether your device is active or not. This one will help you to answer your question, why my bill is, is my electricity bill is increasing. The second one is that we record and analyze monthly electricity usage. Based on electricity usage history of all electronic device, everyone will spot out electricity usage for each room in your house. <laughs> electricity usage behavior of each device for you to maximize the utility. So how it works? Every electrical device has a unique electronic signature. Our sensors will record the millions of times per second. Then we will advance the machine learning detection algorithms work to distinguish one appliance from another to recognize each individual device. Over time, more and more devices are discovered as the community grows. Here are our like, revenue stream. Uh, we have the two revenue streams. Which, the first one is that we sell combo device to our consumer. The second one is that we provide algorithm and data for retail partners and repair services. And here's our team, uh, our mentors, and me as a co-founder, and Tony is the founder of the team. So, and this is our tech partner, Dway, Joff, Amor, and Redder. Last, we have did a pre-sale on channels to the go-to-market strategy. So there are two channels we sell on. It's one is on um, a tech forum in Vietnam, Think Dead of VN. The other one is, is uh, Facebook. So the conversion rate is quite, uh, is quite high now. It's 51 order, free order from uh, Think Dead of VN. Facebook, we have a 46 order. Yeah, and that's on our presentation. Thank you for listening. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Lynn. Okay, now, um, if we can move back to the slide deck. So now, um, for all attendees and panelists, now you've seen examples of pitches um, by different people with solutions for sustainable lifestyles or other green products. 
Um, so hopefully you get some ideas on how you would pitch differently or some ideas that you would like to incorporate into your pitches when you present your work. Um, so what I'd like to show is that Mad Lib slide again. So if Avinav can pop that one up. Um, so I think that what, what everyone should be able to prepare and feel free to develop it and send it to the group or to the organizers is um, a slide or a sentence um, with this sentence, your version of this sentence, so we can understand what the solution is um, that you are providing in your ventures out there. Um, so this is just an example of a slide where you could also put your photo and name, etc. And this is something you can easily post on um, social media as well. And we'd love to hear from you and see your ideas. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is just the beginning of the boot camp, um, and these nine winners are uh, generously serving as the examples that we can work on each week um, to improve whatever aspect that we're working on that week. Um, and it's a good baseline for us because we will have a session uh, week dedicated to pitching that will be in two weeks time um, and looking at what makes a perfect pitch. Um, so that hopefully will be useful to everyone and there'll be some pre-readings already on the website. If you don't have the website link in, we'll send it to the, um, we'll send it on the chat. So now what we'd like to do is just give our uh, nine presenters a taste of pitching to investors. You all will serve as the investors and it's time for you to vote on which of the nine startups you would invest in. Uh, so we'll have now the poll coming up and if you can indicate who you would invest in, that would be great. Okay, I'm making the poll live now. Okay. okay, I I think we should give uh, two minutes for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, everyone can can vote or only. Uh, yeah, even even panelists can vote if you want. Okay. And while you're voting, I'm seeing that also. Yeah, thanks to Oliver for sharing your one sentence. So I'm just going to read it out so that everyone can see. So Oliver is from Future Neutral, and they enable one-click carbon offset at checkout, allowing customers to take part in macro projects above and beyond what a single person can do. So it takes a little bit of the hard work out of being low carbon by letting you, uh, I guess, letting you um, be low carbon with just one click at checkout. Can we check out anywhere? Is this at a supermarket or? Where can we use this? Or retailers. Does that mean your customer is the retailer? So are you selling this product to, to the retailers? Or are you B2C? Is it like an app? Okay. Has everyone voted or we are still waiting for someone? Thanks, Oliver. We'd be really interested to see your pitch um, if you if you feel like sending it through. All right, Abina, how are we going? Uh, so we have, I think, more than 90%, 80% votes, and I think we could close the pitch. So 70 out of 96 people have voted. Uh, and some okay, voting. last chance. Anyone else want to vote? I think our, our panelists can also vote. Are they? Did you all vote for yourselves? <laughs> okay, <laughs> go for it, um, Abhinav. Okay, so I'm closing the poll now. Good luck, guys. Okay, so here we go. So should I share the re results, Janet? Yes, let's, uh, let's see the results. Okay, so congratulations to Sissy from Remake Hub. Well done. 
So you've attracted the most investment. You are also first um, uh, to speak. So congrats on being that. Um, second, we have Rikesh um, in Bhutan with his upcycling plastic waste into to the roads. Um, and you can see also a bit of chatter on the on the chat. So that's probably not surprising. Um, and then do I see all of them? Then close third. Well, next one is um, Earth Etran. with Ichan. Yep. Well done. And next one, Osama with N and Intelica. So well done. And everyone's attracted votes, which is great. And we'll definitely be um, working with all of you to get uh, investment ready so that everyone will be ir irresistible to investors. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So um, that brings us to the end of our first session. We're just a little bit over time. We do want to keep it short so that everyone can get back to what they're doing. Um, so next week, oh, Avinav, if you can share the last slide. Sure. Okay, so um, before we get right into the business of getting investment ready and preparing pitches and that sort of thing, next week we'll focus on tightening up those green credentials. So um, if you are a green product or service, what we're going to do is run through what is a low carbon lifestyle and how to present that um, accurately and convincingly. We're also going to look at another sustainability dimension, which is gender mainstreaming. Um, so a lot of impact investors are now asking, what, how, how have you mainstreamed gender into your business model? So we'll be running through how to do that. And we'll take a few examples from the startups you've seen today. Um, they've done a gender, streamlined gender assessment. Um, and then uh, we'll also, if we have time, we'll be looking at how to make your business inclusive. So if you're, if you're selling to the poor or engaging the poor in your supply chain, how do you do that responsibly? responsibly? Um, so we'll look at, look at supply chains and how, how to do that. Um, we'll have a guest lecture on that. So we'll send through the link. It'll be the same time next week, Tuesday, 26th of May at 11 a.m. Delhi time. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us through the first session. Thanks to all the panelists for speaking. And I hand back to Abhinav to close. Hi, everyone. Okay, so we are going to close the session now. And I think we'll be sending you the links for the next session uh, in a few hours. And looking forward to see everyone uh, in the next and subsequent sessions. Also, uh, everyone is allowed to send questions. Uh, we are happy to, to answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And see Bye -bye, you next everyone. week. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. See you next week. Bye.